Low in Pete's. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Low in Pete's. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Um, Low in Pete and Sloop shootout number two. Two. If you want to see what that's all about, stick around because it gets interesting. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Well, we're here for another loop shootout, and uh, a few ground rules here, or housekeeping, however you want to say it. The uh, original loop that we had um, tried before with the tilting mechanism and all that stuff, you can't see it again. I'm looking at a monitor that's about this big, from, from eight feet away. Anyhow, um, we're going to compare that. We already did a comparison between that and the, and the, the unit with the flashing, uh, six inch wide flashing. Um, and that's what's out in the backyard and that works really well. Okay, it works really well. It's a much quieter environment, but it's still 200 feet shy of the long field environment that uh, the out in the woods where I normally would put it. So um, there's still quite a bit of, of a noise floor there, but the loop, um, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because although the 6 inch flashing is very inexpensive and it works well, um, it does tend to uh, blow around in the breeze quite a bit and I can see it destroying itself pretty quickly um, as time goes on. So we have two loops here today, again the original and number two, uh, or the third uh, style. And this is made out of, let me just grab this roll here. I should have had this up on the screen. Wow, sharp. This is made out of uh, hardware cloth. Okay. It's wide, two feet wide. Um, number, uh, I think it's 032 of an inch wire. And each square is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. So it's um, sort of like the, the equivalent of when you're making a disc on antenna, you don't completely make a, a cone you uh, approximate that. So we're going to try this um, out in the field and that will be another video coming up soon um, but that video um, I'm gonna I'll probably build it 8 by 8 or something like that and I think that's going to be my final. So this one here, this loop, is exactly the same and I'll give you a, a kind of a handheld close-up of it. It's two feet on a side um, and I took a lot of liberties with building this, but um, fundamentally I think you're going to see that it even works better than this loop. So here's the first part of the shootout. The first part of the shootout is this, the original, with compared against that loop. And you're going to see there's a difference. Um, and then when we compare that loop, we're going to compare it to the quieter environment, which is the 5x5 five five flashing loop out, in, out away from the house. And that's mostly to show you the difference in increased signal strength and also to show you uh, that it's in somewhat of a quieter environment than in here with the TV blasting away upstairs and everything. Um, another part of the housekeeping is everything that you see here has, is using a number 75 core. Um, probably can't read that, but I got some close-up pictures of it. This is a number 75 core. They're, I think they're like a dollar a piece or something. Um, you can get them through, uh, I think, Mouser. Anyway, I will grab a, a, um, the spec sheet and I'll put it into the presentation here somewhere um, so that you can you know exactly which one I'm using. Um, it's a 1.2 inch diameter and the inside is a little bit more than, um, than 5 eighths of an inch. Sorry, I don't know the metric equivalent off the top of my head. Um, so it'll fit right over the copper tubing. And um, we're also, we will also go into building this, which is kind of like the cup, not the coupler, but the way to, uh, to, well, yeah, the coupler, to couple into these loops. So let me grab, let me go handheld. Oh, again, every loop that you're seeing here, the one outside, this one, the new one, 
They're all using 10 turns wound on this number 75 core. So that evens the playing field because a lot of guys said, well, I don't know what these mystery cores are. And Francesco mentioned that. And I said, you know what, you're right. Let me try uh, a bunch of experiments using the 75. And I did. And so everything, all that stuff is the same from loop to loop to loop, the coupling. So anyway, let me give you a sort of a close up and you'll see where the loops are and everything. And then we'll go over to the computer and we'll do some A-B comparisons between these two loops. And when we determine which one is better out of these two, exactly, to, remember, exactly the same circumference. The only difference is that's two foot wide mesh and this is a quarter inch, or excuse me, uh, uh, 0.625. So let me grab the, hand, the camera handheld and, and we'll do that. And then we'll go over to the, to the, uh, the receiver there on the, on the test bench. Hang on one second. Okay, there's our number 75 core. Okay, on the copper tubing. And, you know, remember the uh, old adjustment up here. So that's our initial loop, okay? That's the one that we first started this whole uh, low impedance loop concept with. Now we're going over to this loop. And, yes, it is hanging from the ceiling by a string. I don't know how good you can, how good you can see this, but um, very quickly you have a piece of PVC pipe here uh, with a string tied to it. And that's going to hold the corner, the, the diamond part shape towards the ceiling. I just threw a spacer bar in here to get it to be approximately um, rectangular or diamond shaped. <clears throat> and it's exactly eight feet long. Um, the circumference, the circumference of this loop. The only difference is it's made out of this material, right? The, the mesh, which is uh, a quarter inch by uh, squares by two feet width and um, eight feet long and I think the uh, the wire size is 032. Um, my son had this delivered to the house for me because I don't know how to do Amazon. <laughs> so here's um, here's the coupler here and when I go over the other loop here, here we go number another number 75 when I go over the other loop I'm going to show you how to build this into a nice little housing um, I mean when I go to the outside and that's probably be the last one in this series when I go outside and build the outside loop which will probably be like roughly eight feet on the side we're gonna neaten this all up so that we can use um, you know it'll be watertight and it'll it'll withstand anyway here's a couple of uh, quick disconnects just a C clamp like I said I took a lot of liberties with this um, because it's not critical. It's just, you know, to show you how it isn't critical, this is just folded over here. The material is folded over and then it's pinched. Now, maybe there's going to be a, um, a, a, a dissimilar metal problem here outside when it gets wet. But once I get this whole thing all screwed together with some screws, then I'll get out there with a torch and probably and try to solder some of it. But for right now, when I was trying different cores, experimenting, I wanted to be able to just take this on and off very quickly. Let me pull back again. It's not a real pretty sight to see, but it works well. And remember, this is a very, very noisy environment that I'm in. Right? There's the antenna. Okay. There's the ceiling. And literally a foot above that point is where the television is. And it's running. It's a 65-inch something or other. So enough of uh, gazing around at this. Let me hook them up. Oh, that's not the only thing I wanted to show. Let me move over here. I, I, instead of a relay this time, I used a switch. So here's a, a switch. I've got my adapter cables on it. That's the copper loop off to the left. And that's the mesh loop off to the right. And then a single RG, whatever it is, 316 goes off to the um, receiver port here which is that tiny little uh, HF discovery down there and then of course that's the uh, that's the screen we'll be using and that's the microphone so well I guess what I'll do is I'll say copper mesh copper mesh um, and you'll have to remember that these things are uh, exactly the same 
enclosed area. Um, the only difference is the width and the surface area. So let me set up the, the computer and we'll do some testing. Oh, now nah, never mind. We'll talk about that when I get to the computer. One other thing that I wanted to show was uh, there's one loop there. There's the other one. That one I'll be rotating on that pivot mount. And this one I need to tie, not tie down, but uh, connect with a piece of string to hold it in the, in the right orientation. Okay, just want, I wanted to show that. So it'll take me a few seconds when I'm changing between frequencies. So I just have a little string coming out here. And then it goes over to a block of aluminum that's holding it down. All right. So here's the, here we go. We're uh, going over to the computer now. Okay, everybody, we're back, and now we're at the uh, computer we're over here on the test bench running, uh, as you can see, uh, console 3, and we're using the HF uh, discovery here, or the AirSpy discovery. <clears throat> so I want to break this test into uh, test 1, which is between the two loops that I showed you before. Um, I want to break this into two pieces. One is going to be in the medium wave band, and one is going to be in the VLF band. So we're not going to um, worry about things up above um, a, a, above the medium wave band. Um, most of that propagation is uh, sky wave anyway. So, um, and I'm I just not going to include that in here, although it may work, you know, reasonably well there. So it's two o'clock. Let me just check. Yeah, it's two o'clock in the afternoon right now. Okay, two thirty-three. I just checked. Uh, it's 2.33 in the afternoon right now. Um, we're sitting in front of the receiver. We have the preamp is in the off position. AGC is on fast. And we're going to start off by going to uh, our memories. We're going to start off in the broadcast band. This is a uh, station, I don't know, 50 miles away, 40-something miles away. Okay, and we're on the copper loop right now. So you can see that it's running at about an S6 over here on the copper loop. And I'm going to switch now to the mesh loop. Um, I've already previously pointed both of these antennas in the correct direction. So here we go. We're going to make the switch right now. So from an S6 to an S8, um, and the station again is about 40 plus miles away. Let me drop back again. Let me mute this because uh, I don't want the uh, YouTube music police to, to get me. Um, but you can see that the noise floor, this is, you know, right down very close in between the stations here, very close to the noise. Now remember, the noise floor in here is really, really high. So when you take this antenna outside and put it in a quiet environment, 300 feet away from the house, and you do all the proper decoupling, that's going to give you a much, much quieter um, working environment which means this size antenna which is probably already close to being big enough to hear the ambient noise therefore making it any bigger indoors will only increase the ambient noise and the uh, received signal but that's not the case when you go outside especially when you go down lower in frequency so anyway there's a quick test let me see if he's done with his what, oops we don't want to mess that up Okay, so again, here we are listening to the station with the signal to noise, what it sounds like, and we're going to switch back from the copper to the mesh. Okay, and going back to the copper. So you see, um, like roughly uh, 12 dB of difference at that frequency. So now the next frequency we're going to do is 880 kilohertz. That's in New York City, 90 miles away, roughly. And we're back on the copper loop. Okay. Um, again, the, the, the preamp is off here. And what was I going to say? Oh, the reason why I'm doing this station in New York City is because it's diagonal from the one in Springfield that we just did. So here we are on the copper loop with an S7. And now we're on the, let's see, we both point the same way? Yeah. So, yeah, probably almost an S6, let's say. It says S7 over here and on here, but if you look at where the needle really is. But here's up to an S8. So there's a good 10 dB of difference between these two. And again, the only thing that's different 
It's not the it's not the the coupler. It's not the the ferrite. It's not the number of turns. It's the width of the loop, and they're both sitting right next to me here. So let me mute this uh, again, and the next station we're going to go up to, we're back to the copper loop again. We're going to go to 1080, and that's in Hartford. So I have to move the antennas a little bit here, and I'm going to do that real quick on the copper loop. Okay, I optimized that one, so it's just a hair under an S9. And i got to do this one, so this takes a, a second. I wish there was a... A better a better way to do this but um, unfortunately there's not okay so that's the copper loop and that's the mesh loop probably could lower this down a little bit here okay copper Sorry, does, that does not make him there's copper You'd have to find out and there's the mesh loop Okay, so in every case so far, the mesh loop being two feet wide and the same circumference physically better. All right, so we'll mute old rush boat air out. We'll go up to 1410, which I think is basically in the same direction. Uh, let me think. Yeah, roughly in the same direction. So we're going to go and look at this one at 1410, S7, and then we'll go to uh, the mesh loop, S. What is it now? Nine. So, watching over here. So it's about about 12 dB better. Back on the mesh, I can make a little uh, square wave here. Pulse width modulate the uh, the signal history. Anyway, so this is on the mesh here. I don't know. Let's try. Is there one more I could try farther up in frequency? Uh, let's see. That's in that direction. I think 1500. Oh, we'll go up to 1500 and see what happens there. Okay, that's the copper loop on 15, and that's the uh, yeah, that's that's the mesh loop. So, and, and that is kind of pointed in the right direction. So the copper loop is down at uh, S4 and back up there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it on the mesh loop, and I'm going to see if I can notch this this station out. Let me zoom it or, or what kind of a notch I can get on this station here. Remember these antennas don't care if you're touching them at all so here we go. I'll, I'll do that. See what happens. <clears throat> Let's see. five feet away from the monitor here trying to see what I'm doing. I think I, I must have disconnected something here. Nope. There's a pretty big null there. No, something something's uh, something's messed up at the very end. Oh this might be loose. Yeah that, that was a little bit loose. Alright, so let's say there we go. We're roughly pointed at it, and we're going to go in. This is really hard to do with it on a string, so. Now that test didn't work out so well. Well, that's about the null, the best that I can do, and that's about the peak. I'm on the other side of the room now, so. All right, so let me, uh, let me uh, set up for... Um, down in the kilohertz band. We're going to go to a different set of memories here now and we're going to start off back on the copper loop. We're going to go down to 24 kilohertz and we're going to uh, we're going to go to a 200 hertz bandwidth and here we are with like an S5. Let me swing the copper loop into position. Okay, it's about an S7 or so and now I'm positioning the mesh loop Okay, they're both pointing in the same direction. So here we go. Now we're on the copper loop and we go up to the mesh loop. Am I in the right direction here? Did 
the mesh loop is swinging all over the place. Okay, so here we're on the copper loop. Let it settle in. It's a little over, just a hair over an S6 if you look up here. I don't know how he does the averaging. But then I go to the other one, and you can see it pop right up out of the noise. And it's, uh, he's, oh, well, it's about, about a 6 dB difference here. So not nearly as dramatic. Um, next thing I'm going to do is go to 60 kilohertz, WWVB, everybody's favorite time station. And this one's a little trickier. I'm going back to the copper loop. And readjusting that. Okay, in order to do this, I have to... Uh, Let's listen to it. I have to turn the monitor. In order to get rid of that noise. And we'll go down to 100 cycles. Okay. While you're watching that, I'm going to go turn the other end on. Okay, so both antennas are turned in the same direction. Let me adjust the gain here a little bit. But it looks like we have a pretty consistent S3. And here we go, we're going to switch to the mesh loop. And you can see the difference here. Pretty significant for only the only difference being the width of the of the conductor, and that's uh, again we're at uh, what are we at here? 2:43, so probably one of the weakest po times during the day for WWVB, um, 1,500 miles away or so. So we'll go back to the copper loop again, and I have to turn the monitor. Okay, about an S3, a little lightning strike there, and we're going to go back to the mesh loop here again, and you'll, you'll see the switch. So looks like there's about two S units of difference. All right, I'm going to stop this video here right now, and I'm going to make the next comparison that you see is going to be between, between the outside, eight, eight foot, uh, five foot on the side versus two foot on the side. Um, and that's going to be compared against the better of these two antennas, which is the one we're on right now, the mesh antenna. And we'll make a, a quick swing through the band um, the HF, excuse me, medium frequency, and we'll also do that through the, um, the, the LF stations here. In fact, I think I'll start off on the LF station. The thing is, I can't compare, I can't move that antenna that's outside, so we'll only be able to do a couple of stations, um, but I think you'll see the difference in signal strength and noise floor. Um, so that's it for now. W1VLF will be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, we're back inside and we have two antennas now. Uh, one is the outdoor antenna and the indoor antenna. Um, so we're going to do a couple of uh, a, uh, tests back and forth. We're on the uh, indoor antenna, as you could call, at 24 kilohertz from just a couple minutes ago. And I'm going to switch to the outside antenna, uh, which again is only five, is five feet on a side instead of two feet on a side, using exactly the same core and coupling and, and all that, same amount of turns. So we'll make a quick, uh, quick test there. And this is at 24 kilohertz, running around an S7. And now it's uh, S9 plus 8. Let's see, do I have the preamp going here? If, even if I, I, I don't know if I do or not, but I'm going to leave it on. No, the preamp is off. OK, whatever state it's in, I'm going to leave it because um, a couple guys had said inconsistencies, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to do these videos, and I appreciate all the commentary, but sometimes I just, I just lose my mind. So anyway, that's 24 kilohertz on the outside loop, and here's 24 kilohertz on the inside loop. This is the mesh.
So we're at an S7 or so. And then we're back up to uh, S9 plus 7. So what's that? 2S units, 3S units or so. So it's about 18 dB better. And I'm not 100% convinced that this antenna uh, is as quiet as it could possibly be. I mean, the location I have it in, um, regardless, once I build the new loop, which will probably be about 8 feet on the side and out in the quiet environment, that's, that's what I'm going to go with. So um, whether or not this is big enough as it is, I don't know, but I could always put an attenuator in so I don't feel like I'm, uh, I, I have an, an issue there. Even if, even if this is plenty big enough to, uh, to be able to hear the noise floor 300 feet out in the woods. So here we go again. We're, uh, we're on the, on the uh, outdoor loop. You could even see these guys right here, right? This one right here. That's, uh, and all that is lightning stuff. And there's three or four more here. There's another one down at 18 kilohertz. So I'm going to go back to inside. That S7 to there. Okay, so let's go up to 60 kilohertz. I'm going to leave it on the inside antenna just for the heck of it. Even though 60 kilohertz outside is not pointed in the right direction, I'm going to move the antenna here and let's go back to memories. Okay, we'll go back to 100 cycles here, or 50 hertz. Stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so that's the uh, indoor antenna, the mesh, which was the better of the two. Now we're going to go to the outside. Even though the outside is like 50 degrees off, so it's not optimally pointed by any means. But here we go. And if I minimize this, oops, hide. back that down a little bit the color okay switch back to the indoor antenna I could put the preamp on and that would make it certainly quite a bit stronger but for the sake of doing this I'm going to leave it off so those are the two tests that, that we could do in the LF band. We're going to move up to the HF, uh, medium frequency band now. Uh, we're pointed, uh, let's go up to uh, this Hartford signal here. You held on for a very long time. You wanted to say something so here's the indoor show. antenna. Yes, I had wrote a poem about how I feel about Rush. Oh, actually, I'm 90 degrees off of this one. I'm sorry, outside, I'm 90 degrees off. He said we will lose all our rights we need. Let me, uh, let me think about this for a second. Uh, let's see. Um, well, we're northeast, so, okay. So, here is the, ins the, um, the inside antenna. Let me set the gain up a little bit here, a little bit better, so we can see what's going on. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, and now I'm going to switch to the outside antenna. Okay. So about an S5 to S6 or so. But when you get down to those lower frequencies, that's where it really starts to excel. Let's try 1410, which is, this is on the big loop outside. It's on the mesh loop inside. See, I have no control over the direction of the loop outside, and this one is pointed towards Hartford. So the outside loop where I am now is actually a little bit lower. But you can see the noise floor here, all this ambient stuff on this loop inside. That drops. The signal drops a little too, but that drops as well. So anyway, this may not, the, the larger size may not be optimum, for uh, and for the MF frequencies, but uh, anyway, I guess that's about it. Um, well, let's go back to the down to the bottom here again, because that's that's pretty impressive. No preamp on, right? There's the indoor antenna coming through about S7, and there's the 24 kilohertz signal at 
S9 plus 9. So if you want to do something with LF, this uh, low impedance system seems to work out pretty well. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate it. Please subscribe if you can. Um, there's more crazy stuff like this coming up. Um, the next video, I think, will be, and that is if I can get outside, is to build the 8 foot by 8 foot out in the very, very quiet part of the, of the yard, uh, 300 feet out in the woods. Hopefully, I can get to that this weekend but we're supposed to get some rain if not maybe i'll maybe i'll do something else but that's the next thing coming up so that will be eight feet on a side and that will be made out of the mesh and um still yet not uh not 100 percent sure how i'm going to mount that whether i'm going to hold it up by a rope to a tree or if i'm going to try to build a um you know a big big cross to put it on or something or an x anyway that's about it Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Please subscribe if you can and check out my other videos because I think I'm up to like 67 of them now. And there's a lot of uh, interesting and oddball stuff there. 73 from the test bench, W1VLF.